now listening to Beyond the Message. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 6 of Beyond the Message. Today, Pastor wants to answer a new question. What does it mean to be unequally yoked? It's a good one, y'all. Hey, Pastor made time to make sure that you have these answers. But if this is the first time on the podcast, you can submit your questions by visiting www.mydoorfaith.org and then select Beyond the Message. So without any further hesitation, let's get those answers. For Clarice, what does it really mean to be unequally yoked? Can two believers who want to be together still be unequally yoked? Let's look at the word. Now, this word yoke that Paul is going to use here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14, we're going to get to that just a moment. But uh, that word means, yoke means putting two people together, joining. So that's the key word, joining together coupling coupling putting two people together uh now when you join two people together i want you to know that joining people together don't come from man joining people together is what god does okay so let's look at that in matthew chapter number 19 and verse number six and matthew 19 and verse number six uh wherefore this question was asked to jesus in matthew 19 Uh, Verse 3 said, The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? He answered and said to them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. They twain, male and female, shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Then he going to answer the question. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Otherwise, don't mess with it. The key is, did God join the man and the woman together? If he did, then don't mess with it. Let's look at some things that you can look at in the Word to find out, did God join this couple together? Because let's go to 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, this is one of the questions that I go through when I'm really counseling people or talking to people about marriage and they want to talk to a pastor about marriage. I've been married 50 years, so I believe I got a little something to offer. As a matter of fact, I got the Word. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul said this to the church on unity. He said, Now I beseech you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So we can, we can take just that. And let you see, first of all, if two people are going to be joined together, they have to be joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So that means if you're going to be joined together, it's going to have to be a spiritual principle there. Be perfectly joined together in the same thoughts, in the same purpose. So that's what you have to understand. You have to have the same thoughts and the same purpose. Now, here's, here's unequally yoked. If the man believes that you're saved by grace, that means I'm saved by the cross, through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And then the woman believes she's saved by water baptism. You got a problem. That's unequally yoked together. See, two people are believing two different things to be saved. Here's one person believe that I got baptized when I was a baby. So I'm all right with God. 
I'm already a believer because I was baptized when I was a baby. Then you got a man saying, wait a minute. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that we are saved by believing Christ's death, death, and resurrection. Well, I was saved when I was baptized when I was a baby. So I'm already a Christian. Do you want to get married? You're going to be unequally yoked together. See, you could you are unequally yoked together if you don't believe the same way to be saved. That is still unequally yoked together. And both of you are saying we are both believers. Well, let me ask you the question. Where are you going to go to church? The woman says, I want to go to this church because I'm believe I believe I was saved by water baptism. The next man says, Okay. I want to go to this church because I believe I was saved by grace. Can't you see you're unequally yoked together? You're going to have problems in your relationship, in your marriage. Okay, just, just one thing. Let's move on. Now, remember, we talked about joining two people together. Now, let's look at uh, one more. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, Luke chapter 15. Let's show you what happened in Luke 15. Now, here, here's a prodigal son, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some instances. I want to show you something that happened on the prodigal son. Luke chapter number 15. Let, let's see what happened at the prodigal son. Because the prodigal son did something. Most people don't pick this up. But on the Luke chapter number 15, let's see what happened to this prodigal son. Luke 15, and I want to key on verse number 15. You might not have picked this up. Luke 15, this story starts at verse 11. A certain man had two sons. The younger son of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that befallen to me. And he divided to him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country. He wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, there arose a great famine in the land. He began to be in want. Now watch what goes on here. He began to be in want. There's a problem. And the Bible says he went and joined himself. Now, remember what I just said. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He did it himself. And the Bible says, this man sent him into his field to feed swine. He joined himself to a citizen of that country. This man put him in bondage. He put him in bondage. And the Bible says he would have fain of filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, no man gave to him. And the Bible says when he came to himself, he says, How many high servants of my father have I have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise, go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your high servants. All right. Now, we know the father did that. We know the father. The next verse says, he arose, came to his father. His father was yet a great way off. His father saw him, had compassion on him, ran and fell upon his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servant, bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his, fin on his hand. Put shoes on his feet, and not only that, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. This my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now, the Bible taught this story for a young man that did not understand his destiny. He went out and joined himself to a citizen of that country. See what happened to him? See, I'm using this to show you if the Lord don't join you together, 
you can have all kind of complications. Because the Lord didn't do it. The Bible said what God has joined together, Matthew 19 and 6, let not man put asunder. Okay, let's keep going. Now, I want, what I want to do, I want to begin to show you in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to show you 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want to read this out of the, of the good news. Let's read a little good news Bible here. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 15. It says, Know ye that your bodies are the parts of the body of Christ? Shall I take the part of the Christ's body and make it part of the body of a prostitute? See, otherwise, I know you asked the question, what if two people are believers? My point is, what if they're not? So, I'm going to get to the part if both are believers. See, you can be believers, but you don't have the same mind for us where we want to go to church. We don't have the same mind of how we saved See, we may not have the same mind. One person might want to give to the church. The next person don't think we ought to give nothing to the church. See, you have a problem in that way. So I'm showing you all of the areas that cover. Here in 1 Corinthians 6, 15, know you not that your bodies are the part of the body of Christ? Shall I take the part of Christ's body and make it of the body of a prostitute? So you got to make sure the person you're going to marry that you're going to yoke to and join to, both of you are born-again believers. Both of you have the Spirit of Christ. Because if not, it's not going to work. You're going to have a lot of trouble. Or perhaps you don't know, we keep reading, First Corinthians uh, uh, chapter number 6 and verse number 16. Or perhaps you don't know that the man who joins his body to a prostitute becomes physically one with her. The scriptures say quite plainly, the two shall become one body. Now, you must understand spiritual principles. If they are spirits in the unsaved body, and it is, because if your person is not saved, that's, the devil dwells in that body. If the person is a Christian, Christ dwells in that body. So you think about what I'm saying. Think about what God said. Now you come join those two people together. One has demon spirits. One, one has God spirits. They're going to have to sleep together. You're going to have a problem. That's not going to work. Let me read it again. Verse 1. Verse 15. Do you know that your bodies are the part of the body of Christ? Shall I take the part of Christ's body and make it the part of the body of a prostitute? Impossible. Perhaps you don't know that the man who joins himself to a prostitute becomes physical, physically one with her. The scriptures say plainly, the two will become one body. But he who joins himself to the Lord become spiritually one with him. Avoid immorality, better known as fornication. Any who sin, a man commit, any sin a man commit, does not affect his body. But the man who is guilty of fornication, sexual immorality, he sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and you won't and who won't to and who was given to you by God? The Holy Spirit was given to you by God. You don't you do not belong to yourself. You belong to God. He bought you for a price. Watch what it says. Use your bodies for God's glory. I mean, is that simple enough? You must honor God with your body. It's not your body no more. It's God's body. Now, let's show you something else. Oh, this is so good. Now, we're going to go from there to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm not going to read a lot out of Ephesians. I wanna, but I do want to include this to show you where the scriptures are. 
in the book of Ephesians chapter number 5, the last few verses uh, talks about the Christ and the church. So remember, but I'm going to show you when he's talking about joining together. Ephesians chapter 5, I want to show you what it means because the Bible used the word uh, joining together. I'm going to use the two verses. I'm going to say Ephesians 4 first. Uh, Ephesians 4 and verse 15 and 16 first. I'm going to do Ephesians 5, but I want to do Ephesians 4 first. Ephesians 4 and verse 15 said, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Christ is the head of the body. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Fitly joined together. According to the effectual working in, in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, in Ephesians chapter number 5, at the end of that chapter, he says, verse 31, Ephesians 5, 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Remember, when you're joined to the woman, you become one flesh with her. Okay? So if the woman or the man do not have the spirit of Christ, she has the spirit of the devil. One have the spirit of the devil. One have the spirit of, of God. Can't you see what problem you're going to have? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. Now, let me show you that uh, in the NLT. We're going to show you two verses here. Uh, let's go to uh, Titus. We're just about done. Go to Titus chapter 1. I'm going to read this out to NLT. From the book of Titus chapter number 1, and we're going to look at verse number 15. Titus chapter 1. Verse 15 and 16. Just those last two verses. We read not the NLT. Every, everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. Now remember, everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. But nothing is, impu nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving. Ain't nothing pure. Because their minds... And their conscience is corrupted. Now, when you marry a man or woman, that's not saved. Everything is pure to those whose hearts is pure. So if the person is saved, their heart is pure. But if they're not saved, their heart is corrupt. They are unbelieving. Their minds and their conscience are corrupted. Such people claim they know God. Oh my God. Need to listen. Some people claim they know God. We're talking about they profess they know God. But the Bible says, but they deny them, but they deny him by the way they live. That's what Titus is telling you. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt. And unbelieving, because their minds and their conscience are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. They are destitute, disobedience, worthless for doing anything good. You got to know the person that you're going to be joined with. They can say they're a believer, but if you take the word, are they really a believer? We're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6 as we close out today. Hope you have been enjoying this. And verse number 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's, let's read this because, I mean, I, I can't say enough how good this is. All right. I know I want to get to verse 14, but I, I want to uh, uh, read from verse 14 all the way down to the end of the chapter. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Do not try to yoke yourself. He's talking about the word work. We read not the good news. Do not try to work together as equal 
with unbelievers. Now that word join together, he used the word work, but it's really talking about joining people together with unbelievers. For it cannot be done. That, isn't that something? It cannot be done. I, I like to read that same thing at the NLT. Just that one verse. Just that one verse. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14. Just that one verse. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. So we talk about working together, teaming up, even marriage. How can righteousness be a part with wickedness? I'm reading this out of the NLT now. How can righteousness be a partner's with wickedness. I'm talking about partners. See, when you get married, you become partners. The man and the woman become partners in a relationship. How can one be righteous, be a partner with one that's wicked? Now, he's talking about one is a believer and another is not believers. Well, I know you are talking about if both believers, but my point is if both are saved, then you're okay. But the key is what if they're not? Then he says, how can light live with darkness? This is why so many people divorce. How can light live with darkness? God in one body, the devil in the other body. They both land in the bed together. How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Now, this is in the NLT. What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Christ in one of the body. The devil and other body. How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? How can you marry an unbeliever? What union can there be between God's temple and the temple of idols? For we are the temple of a living God. As God has said, I will live in them, walk in them, be their God. They will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers. I'm reading out the NLT, verse 17. Therefore, come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, saith the Lord. Do not touch their filthy things. You know what God says about things that the unbeliever has? He called them filthy. Do not touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. I will be your father. I will, you will be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I want to read this same thing out of the NLT. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14. This this is just something that I, I just love. It said, do not try to work together as equals with unbelievers. It cannot be done. We read not the good news now. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. How can right and wrong be partners? How can light and darkness live together? How can Christ and the devil agree? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? How can God's temple come to terms with pagan idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God himself has said, I will make my home with my people. I will live among them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. And so the Lord said, you must lead them. Separate yourself from them. Have nothing to do with that which is unclean have nothing to do with what is unclean and I would accept you. I will be your father. You shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Hey, my time is gone already. Pastor Crump here on enjoying the word of God. Beyond the message has been brought to you by Pastor Earl O. Crump of the Door Faith Christian Church. Hope you enjoyed this word today. My time is up. I thank you for yours.